out of the blue corner. Wearing white, trimmed in red and black, he weighed it officially 198 and one half pounds. In 19 professional bouts, his record stands at 17 victories, two defeats, 11 wins coming by way of knockout. Here is a challenger from KwaZulu Natal, South Africa, to be so. The Rock and Chuno. And next is opponent across the ring, fighting out of the red corner. Wearing black trunks, he weighed in 199 and one half pounds. In 10 professional bouts, he stands perfect with 10 victories. No defeats, nine wins coming by way of knockout. In 2012, he captured Olympic gold for Ukraine. He fights out of and represents Simferopol, Ukraine. Here is the undefeated, reigning, defending, WBO Cruiserweight Champion of the World, Alexander Okay, gentlemen, I give you an instruction in the dressing room. Let's have a good clean fight. Turn to your corner and wait the bell. Good luck. James Ali Bashir is a longtime assistant to Emmanuel Stewart, the late great Emmanuel Stewart, uh, one of the greatest trainers ever and our former colleague. And uh, he trains Usyk now. Usyk is a thought to be a rising star in boxing. When he heard that this was the opponent, Machuno, he said, why did it have to be this guy for his debut on HBO? This is a really tough and awkward assignment. Usyk is a gold medalist, outstanding, dominant international amateur, and uh, now a dominant champion. And this division, the cruiserweight division, has been stereotyped to a certain degree in the past as a puncher's division. Usyk does have punching power, but he is a boxer first, and Roy, he comes in throwing an average of about 50 jabs per round, maybe one of the most effective jabbers in the sport. Similar in that regard to Gennady Golovkin, who sets up his power punching with an extremely prolific jab. Yeah, Usyk is very tall for this weight class, a very rangy guy, already speaking about going up to the heavyweight division. Um, knows that he has a very crafty guy in front of him, so right now he's trying to feign him, set him up for that right hook if he can. Uh, unfortunately, The Rock is not really going for it yet, so, I mean, it's a great boxing class going on right now. Two southpaws, two natural counter punchers, so it's a matchup of boxing skill. Both can crack, although Usyk is the one who's regarded as having real knockout power. Usyk is such a, a talent, was such a talent as an amateur and so far as a pro, that the, the hope is that he can dominate this division and move up in short order and join this new exciting heavyweight division that we're now hopefully in the midst of. Big strong guy began bouncing in his corner before the opening bell. When asked about his fighting style, Usyk says, I'm a player. I'm in there to play. I use my feet to set up the opponent, and I like to have fun. And as he does, good hook by Nchunu. That didn't look too fun. No, it didn't look fun at all. Nchunu has gotten a little respect early from Uzik. You can see the awkwardness because of the height, which he makes his advantage, Roy, Nchunu. Yeah, that's what makes it so awkward, Max. He's a southpaw. He's short. Uh, most people think that they can reach him and he can't reach them, but it's not like that's really not the case uh, We saw Usyk go at him just now and back up and think that he was out of range But Nchunu still landed a little short right hook I remember watching big heavyweights try to deal with Levi Phillips who was simply too short for them to line up the right angle and land a shot against him Makes it very difficult to reach down to the guy all night. Orlin Norris, too, who was a very good cruiserweight, uh, Terry Norris's older brother, and a good heavyweight. But N Orlin Norris was much more conventional than this. Much more. And what I like about Usyk, 
is that he's so smart that he hasn't even let a single left hand go yet because he wants to wait until he gets that one opening and then shot him through the wood. In other seconds. words, he doesn't want to throw a left until it's going to matter. Until it's going to definitely land. He's not throwing a left hand this round. Remarkable. Good first round. Be patient. Don't be too eager. Work behind your jab and stay to your left side. You see your shake is working for you. Keep shaking it like that there. Work your jab. Stay outside to your left side. You understand? Keep moving to your left. Keep, keep pumping your jab. Stay to your, uh, on the side, to your left side. Stay, stay, be patient. Don't run into nothing. You're boxing good. Keep it up. So, Roy, I noticed your uh, close friend, Russ Anber, is the cut man uh, and number two guy in Usyk's corner. Did you get a chance to talk to Russ about Usyk? Uh, yes, I did. He said Usyk is a very talented guy, a uh, very strong puncher, very skilled boxer, a uh, guy who he thinks a lot of, thinks very highly of him, thinks he'll have a good run as a cruiserweight, and then thinks he'll move up to heavyweight and also continue that run. You know, he comes from that school of what they call it, Papachinko. Papachenko, Lomachenko's father, who is such an extraordinary trainer, apparently, that the, Ukra that, that the Ukrainian fighters from that Olympic team credit him with the dominance of Ukrainian amateur boxing. Well, five, had, five medals in London. Yeah, they never had that many gold medal winners before he became the trainer, so who else could you credit? Amazing. You know, there's a history in boxing of really good, super talented, even all-time great fighters having trouble with short, little, awkward guys. Dating back to Jack Dempsey's struggle against a guy named Fat Willie Meehan, all the way through Roy Jones with Montel Griffin, who was an excellent fighter, but a short, awkward fighter who, who gave you more problems than you were used to in your first fight with him. And uh, Usyk, I can see why Bashir was, was a little hesitant about this fight, because Usyk is looking something less than his billing right now. Well, see, now you're bringing up old stuff, Max, but let me just go into <laughs> <laughs> First of all, he didn't give me a problem in my first fight with him. It's just that I was going to let him use his patience. I would use my patience to right. wear him down because I knew that in the late rounds he would fade. Well, I he mean, won like three rounds from you at a time yeah. when no one ever won a minute from you. True, but what it was was that he was a counterpuncher just as I was. I was the champion, so why should I go give him the opportunity to counter me when I'm the one with the belts and I know that Meantime, when you got fade. Serious, you knocked him out in one round That's in the rematch. Right. That's what I'm trying to tell you. So had I got serious the first night, I wouldn't have to go through that. So it's a little different than this case. Montel Griffin, a silver medalist, by the way. Yeah, he's a great, good fighter now. Very good fighter. And when you find a short guy that can counter punch, that makes him really effective. And that's what makes uh, this guy, The Rock, such a good fighter because he's short, but he can counter like he's a tall guy. That'd be swing Chunu. Launching a left hand causes Alexander Usyk to back up. Usyk, with 40 seconds to go in round two, is still almost all jabs. Hasn't unleashed the left hand much at all. And Mchunu has been able to land a couple of times upstairs. There's a good straight jab by Mchunu. A couple of body shots. He's perhaps done more damage early than Usyk has been able to do. Yes, he has. Uh, right now, he has the lead on, on uh, Usyk in my eyes, but Usyk's just trying different things, trying to set up a big shot, seeking to hurt Mchunu, and um, seeking to get him some respect. Usyk was the underdog when he went to Poland this summer to take on Krzysztof Lewacki for the cruiserweight crown, and he dominated Klobotsky en route to a 12-round unanimous decision. We kick off the new year in the ring on January 28th with a boxing after dark doubleheader featuring Francisco Vargas defending his 130-pound title against Miguel Berchelt. On that same card, Takashi Miura, Vargas's dance partner in the 2015 fight of the year, faces Ricky Mickey Roman. Francisco Vargas, quite possibly the most entertaining fighter in boxing at this moment. He's definitely one of them, Jim. Good jab, 
41-year-old Sean Smith runs a gym in Johannesburg. And a few years ago, Kabisu Nchunu, who comes from a much, much smaller town in an agricultural area of South Africa, was looking for a gym with more population, better sparring partners, a chance to improve. And he walked into Sean Smith's life. Smith has been his trainer and manager ever since. Copy box numbers on total punches landed through the first couple of rounds. Imchuna with a slight edge over the heavily favored Alexander Usyk. Chunu doing a good job of leaning back on that back foot, making Usyk reach Roy and then countering him with this crisp little lead right hand. Yeah, that's what makes it impressive, Max, and that's what also makes it so awkward for a guy like Usyk because a short man that can counter you is a really dangerous thing because you never know when he's going to counter. You think you're out of range and you're not. I mean, he does things that completely throws you off, and that's what uh, Nchunu is doing here to Usyk. He's not showing Usyk anything. Makes it hard for Usyk to take the initiative because when he leads, he's missing and he's out in front. Open to counters. Usyk beginning to find the target just a little bit more consistently. And Junu steps in and fires to the body. Usyk felt that right hand again. Yeah, he did. And uh, Usyk has a good jab, but he's not using it enough, Max. Uh, Right there, you see he's allowing Umchunu to get close to him with the hook. When you're that tall, you have to use that jab and keep your distance. No, 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 he's not keeping his right distance right with right his right jab. That's a very Stop. dangerous thing for a taller fighter. There's something about the rhythm or lack of same in African fighters which tends to confuse opponents, particularly South African fighters who seem to fight in a sort of staccato, offbeat rhythm that throws other fighters' timings off, Roy. Yeah, uh, his, his, his rhythm throws everybody off, and it's because they don't know when he's coming and when he's not. He fights in a sporadic pace like that. You never know when he's going to just counter you or when he's going to take the lead on you. And right there, Usyk thought he had a left hand, but he was afraid to throw it because he knew that might, there, there might have been a counter behind it. And wound up getting hit on the cheek by a right hand from Nchunu. Well, that's a cute little right hand that Nchunu throws that may be carrying the fight so far. Jim, I think to your point, their various regions of the world have their own styles and rhythms to their style. Eastern European has a kind of rhythm that throws off a lot of American fighters and, and maybe also South African. Well, this is not typical South African, I don't think. That's right. This kid is a real good boxer. He's a cute boxer. You don't really see that from South Africa. Usually we see guys Watch who come to war from head. South Africa, and um, he's not that type of a guy. He's a James Tony type, slick, up and down with the waistline. You know, I mean, he just, he's very difficult to hit. He's different. I think also that the world is becoming, the styles are becoming more homogenized as there's kind of a cross-pollinization of styles or pollination, sorry, ten of seconds, styles um, as trainers jump from country to country and fighters train all over the world as well. I agree, Max. Right here we see Umchuno coming, I mean, out in this right hook, constantly landing, giving Usyk problems. There's one, there's another one. Never no real power on it, but just enough, just right, the right jab right there. The right jab again, just enough of the right hand to cause problems. The right jab a third time. A short right jab on the way in from the shorter fighter. How is the shorter man out jabbing the taller man? That's the problem in the fight. It is fascinating, and Imchunu so far has landed one more punch by CompuBox count than has Usyk, but is landing at a significantly higher percentage, 30% as opposed to 19%. So the rhythm of the fight early seems to favor Tabiso Nchunu. And it's not even a long jab like Kwawi. Right. Or a bazooka like Quarte. No, it's a, a short jab that he almost backhands at times and, and looks like he could turn it to a hook whenever he wants. Round four begins. Harold, how did you score the first three rounds? <laughs> okay, Jim, I got it two rounds to one. 29, 28, Tabiso Imchuno. You know, Jim, in rounds one and two, Imchuno was the only guy in there fighting. I mean, he was landing good, solid shots. Usyk was doing nothing more than pouring with that right jab. In round three, I thought Usyk opened up. He, he sort of, you know, got the idea of how Imchuno fights, and he started throwing his left hand in addition to that right jab. Two rounds to one, Tabiso Imchunu. Harold makes a good point, uh, Roy Jones, that uh, Usyk 
unleashed the left hand in the third round, and he's throwing the left again here in the fourth round. So Usyk begins to get a little bit freer with his punch output as round three goes into round four. Yeah, Jim, but the thing you don't like about it is that right now it looks like his hardest punch is his, is his uh, left yeah. right right jab, and that's not a good thing because there you go. That go a good shot. Now he's throwing a good left hand because he needs to get respect from Unchuno or he's going to Chuno has also taken away one of the things that Usyk talked about going into this fight. He said he likes to play. He is a fighter who thrives off that rhythm of having fun because he's a performer and he's usually dominant. Roy, you were like that. Lomachenko is kind of like that at times nowadays. Really athletic fighters who are able to dominate their opponents can kind of put on a show and Chuno is not letting him do it. Well, that's why the trainer doesn't like Umchuno as an opponent because Umchuno is not going to allow you to play around with him. He's going to be dead serious. He's going to like that. He's going to be right on top of things. Now, Usyk throwing some real punches. But Umchuno is right on top of everything that he does, and it doesn't allow you to play because if you play, he'll catch you slipping and you'll be laying down. In the first couple of rounds, Usyk was thrown off enough by Umchuno's timing that he wasn't even really trying to counter. Uh, in Chunu's shots in the last two rounds and most particularly in the last minute He's been countering freely and starting to land that left hand as you saw him do over the top there Yes, just landed a really good left hand He also just threw a left hand that was about a foot short and it looked like he was anticipating him Chunu's rhythm Hoping to catch him coming in and Chunu's head just wasn't there <laughs> Oh, good shot by Umchuno. Good counter left. That's what I mean when I say he doesn't give you an opportunity to play much. I thought Usyk may have parried it with his shoulder. And we remind you while we watch the first of our two preliminary bouts, the focus of the evening is on Bernard Hopkins in the main event. After losing his pro debut in 1988, Hopkins rattled off 22 straight victories, appearing mostly in small venues seconds, away from the spotlight of network television. Then in May of 1993, he got the call to face Roy Jones for a vacant middleweight title, though he lost that fight. That night would prove the first of many landmark moments in Hopkins' illustrious career. When I fought Roy Jones in 93 RFK Stadium, it was my opportunity on HBO under a heavyweight championship card. Good combination by Roy Jones. Those flashy fast hands, very, very difficult to deal with. I didn't deliver. That was a really, really tough time for me in my adjustment of that high level of fighting. You can just see that the Jones is just outsmarts him. It's like cat and mouse. There's a pattern in my DNA that shows that I know how to correct myself and never look back. And I took that fight and never looked back. Bernard Hopkins fought Roy Jones on the undercard of a Riddick Bow title defense in RFK Stadium in Washington in 1993. And then, Roy, the two of you fought again a long time later, and those were two entirely different kinds of fights. But in the first fight, was his inexperience a big difference against you? No, it wasn't. It was the same thing as usual as my hand speed. Uh, my hand speed and my knowledge of the game. I was far more sophisticated as far as knowledge goes in the game at that age than he was. Uh, he had fought and had a lot of experience, but my knowledge was different and my hand speed was different. Because he didn't have a long amateur career at the height of the amateur world as you did, uh, that, was, that was a privilege that was not available to Bernard because of the years that he spent in Raiderford Prison. Mm -hmm. Well, that, that was, but at the same time, when he got out, he was beating a lot of guys oh. and he was doing his thing. So. So I was I was kind of knowing that we were on the same level except my hands were put Meanwhile Usyk is doing his thing here in the fifth round as he is suddenly Demonstrably way more comfortable in there and way more Adept at finding the target against him Chuno. Yes, he's starting to touch and land those big punches uh, I think he got Chuno's respect now and uh, we'll see what happens Yeah, he figured something out in the last round. It looks like that he's employing here. I, I think it's He's figured out in Chunu's rhythm where his head's going to be for the left hand. Because mm -hmm. he just landed about three times this round already. And 
there's Mchunu making an interesting adjustment, Roy. He's like, oh, he's figured me out when I'm on my back foot. Let me get inside a little bit. Yeah, as, as he was throwing those uppercuts, Usyk was oh. backing up and looking at the uppercuts as if to say, hmm, this is something new. <laughs> Usyk much more comfortable in the fight now. Mchunu trying to shock him. Usyk has to be careful though, Jim. He's throwing shots that are really not big shots. And if Umchunu throws a big right overhand left, I mean, it could be a problem because he's taller and that's the best shot to catch a taller southpaw with. Umchunu's a good fighter, uh, but class tells over time and Usyk is trying to be a great fighter. And these are the kind of, you know, these are the rounds where the class generally starts to tell the middle of the fight. Yes. Power punches in round five. Usyk about to triple Inchunu in terms of landed power shots here. Yeah, Usyk waking up now. Good shot by Usyk. Terrific one, too. And you saw the hand speed for a big man on that one, too. Getting to be a much easier fight now for Alexander Usyk as we complete round five. Now he's ready. Now start turning the uppercuts. Off the double jab. Off the double jab. Uppercut with the same right hand. Double. Double jab. Double jab, faint the left hand, shake the left hand, throw the right uppercut. Double jab, shake the left hand like you're gonna throw it and fire the right uppercut, then the left hand. Right uppercut, left. You're doing a good job. He see Usyk with it behind the jab. Find a good enough jab, then a, a good short double followed by a great straight left over the top. That's what he's been trying to find, then followed by a right hook. That's the left hand he's been trying to land all night. CompuBox numbers in round five. Down, Usyk huh? landed 23 out of 68 punches. Imchunu, six out of 32. So that's a much stronger round for Usyk than the rounds we had seen up to that point. Significant shift in momentum in the fight. And increasingly, there's a chance that we'll see why there's so much enthusiasm about Alexander Usyk. Well, one of the things, it's a mixed bag with Usyk's left hand to me as a power punch out of the southpaw stance, guys. On the one hand, he's able to land it. He adjusts it mid-flight and uh, he slaps with it if he has to, but he's able to land it accurately. On the other hand, because of that, I don't see him really ever throw it straight from the shoulder, Roy, and really get his weight behind it. No, I haven't seen him throw but one like that all night, Max, and I think he waits until he's assured that he's going to land it, then he turns it over like that. Meanwhile, he's like Lomachenko. They go at a good 80 until they find that 120 time. When they find the right time to throw that 100 mile an hour, 120 mile an hour pitch, they pitch it. Meanwhile, they just throw an 80 or a 90 mile an hour pitch until they find the opening like that. See, so he threw the right hook, speed yep. it up then. He knew the left wasn't going to land, but the right hook he put a little bit more mustard on because he expected it to land. And those are the kinds of nuances you pick up over the course of a long amateur career. Over the course of a long amateur career or over the course of a great trainer. Which in his case would be his exposure to Anatoly Lomachenko, although as Max pointed out at the beginning of the fight, James Ali Bashir, who has been his trainer since the beginning of his pro career, is no slouch. No, not at all. I mean, that's really good hand speed and yes, accuracy for a big for guy. Cruiserweight. Yes. Six foot two plus guy, southpaw. That's that's impressive. He just turned the mustard on one of those left hands again, too, Max. Yep. And like got that him right hurt. there. Yeah. He's suddenly putting a lot of distance between himself and Tabiso Imtuna. I mean, this is a whole different fighter they than the guy we were looking at in the first couple of rounds. And now, Mchunu comes back with an unimpeded left counter shot, but that's all right. Usyk is in charge. Yes. Four, five, six, seven, eight. How you feel? Mchunu has been stopped in both of his losses, and he appears to be getting worn down here now 
as Usyk is throwing freely. Yes, he let in round six. He let Usyk go around him too much. Let Usyk land too many big shots in this round early. So now Usyk is out in front of him. Sunu can handle himself though. Like he's still clipping Usyk every now and then enough to stop Usyk from just running him over here. Good left hand. First Good right knockdown of the fight in this round. And Chunu gets in a couple of strong shots down the stretch, but overall it was another big round for Alexander Usyk. Oh, it's tough now. He's going flat out. You hang in there. Where's the spit bucket? Where's the spit bucket? Take that thing out. Shout out to Danny Trigger. Just as we were speaking about Bashir, speaking about the uppercut in the corner, that left uppercut right there is what really caused the knockdown. The left hand was to the back of the head. That didn't do any damage. This uppercut that, that uh, the trainer asked for, Ali asked for early, he asked for the opposite uppercut, but that left uppercut landed instead of the right, and that was the shot that really put Ntuno down. So referee Lee Morat counted for the first knockdown of the fight in round number six. Now we go to the seventh. Harold Letterman, how do you have it halfway through? <laughs> Look at him. I got it four rounds to two. 58, 55, Alexander Usyk. You know, Jim, in, in round six, he's going to knock down. He gets an extra point. So that becomes a 10-8 round in Usyk's favor. But you were right. The first two rounds and the last four is the two different fights. Usyk just does nothing but feel you out for two rounds. And then he opened up in the third, and he's been just taking over this fight. Jim, watch the movement Usyk gives you. He gives you a whole lot of movement, setting up his shots. Four rounds to two, Alexander Usyk. Good quick right uppercut by Mchunu. Got to have more of that, Jim, though. He's not doing it enough. Trying to reestablish himself in the fight after a very tough round six. Good counter left by Mchunu. Got to love how Uzi places those punches. He places the taps with tap speed, but he throws the big ones with big speed. The, the, at, at the top levels of boxing, the question is, if you're not like a devastating seek and destroy knockout artist like Triple G or Kovalev or someone like that or Chocolatito, the question is, are you giving people something to watch? Now, this has not been the most action-packed fight. But the answer for me with Usyk is yes, absolutely. He's giving you something good to watch. Mm -hmm. If you're a, if you if you're a fan of boxing, you will like watching Usyk fight. Well, I think Harold may have hit the nail on the head. It's the movement. You know, you just don't see a, a big guy like this who's this light on his feet and capable of switching directions and shifting gears the way he does. And he's got movement with both his hands and his feet. Moves with his upper body. Slips punches with his head. There are a lot of good things to be said about his ability to fight. Those good pity pat punches until it's time to throw the big ones. You gotta love that. And Another good left by Uchuno. It's hard to imagine fighting a guy much more awkward than Uchuno. And Usyk has already scored two knockdowns and the fight has gotten better in each progressive round. And the difference in power punches landed proceeds from the fact that Nchunu is very demonstrably trying to land one punch at a time, and Usyk is piling up combinations with greater and greater frequency. Yeah, yeah I think Nchunu's power's gone, Jim. I said two knockdowns, one was ruled a slip. Looking ahead, December 27, it's the premiere of Boxing's Best of 2016. Spend your holiday reliving the sport's biggest stars, taking part in some of the best and most significant fights of the year. And Wednesday, December 28, in the middle of all that, it's the year-end edition of my show, The Fight Game. We review the year in the ring and hand out our annual awards, including Fight and Fighter of the Year. He's done.
Ref, watch out for the fall. Yeah. I'm not punching ball. No, 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 you could. Okay, okay. Right, okay thanks. thanks. Yeah. Got to hurt this guy. He's, he's put his best on you. Ask something from him. Take something to him, boy. Come. Round eight of schedule 12. Olympic gold medalist Alexander Usyk of Ukraine in the black and white trunks against Tabisu Nchunu of South Africa in the white with red and black trim. Usyk seemed to give away the first couple of rounds or Nchunu claimed them with stern counter punching. But since that time, Usyk has been landing combinations Piling up a lead. <laughs> There's something playful. There's quick hands for a big man, Jim. That's what I like to see about Usyk. Very good hands, very good pity pat speed punches. I like that. Everything plays off that quick right jab. She throws with great frequency. Yeah. Now there's a left across the top. Quick right hook. Usyk landing punches in bunches once again. There's a couple of quick counter shots from Mchuno and Usyk looks at him as if to say, the impudence of you landing those two counter shots in the middle of me putting on a show here. Yeah, he said, what are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> this was my moment to put on a show. Oh, and you shot. hit me. Big left hand over the top by Usyk, but Mchunu comes back with another right hand shot. Good fight. Good defense by Mchunu. Yeah, Mchunu has exceptional defense, Max. I must give him credit there. I mean, exceptional defense. If he was a little bit more offensive here, he probably could be an issue, but. Not really throwing a lot of punches because Usyk making him keep his hands at home by throwing the pity pats and stepping around left and stepping around right. Beautiful boxing that Usyk is doing. And Juno's defense probably frustrated Usyk the first two or three rounds. Since then, the Ukrainian star has found a way to have fun. And it's hard against a guy like Juno. But see those punches right there? That left hand had all the mustard on it. That's what I mean when I say he can change speed with his punches. Even the way Mchunu holds his elbows, you're dissuaded from going to the body because it's like, you know, your forearm's going to run into an elbow. Well, he's a short guy, too, and with that cup being up over his navel, there's not much room there to throw to the body. So Usyk has largely ignored the body. Of course he has. <laughs> He used to see Usyk land a good low round left to the back. Tried to throw another nigga hit with a beautiful right hook right there. A little bit open hand, but it was beautiful. And he still back has to say, where that? All of that, and I get caught with that left hand. I don't <laughs> like it. <laughs> I love the look on his face. He like he said, where that? The nerve of you. <laughs> this is my show. Usyk's a guy who idolizes Muhammad Ali. You Born know. on his birthday. Right, yep. and, and, and in and out of the ring idolizes Ali, and you can see some of the showmanship there, but again, hard to be that kind of showman against an awkward guy. And before you have to Google Ali's birthday, it's January 17th. 
a day after mine. Started to say, same day as the great Bernard Hopkins. Yeah. <laughs> Lots of good fighters right around there. Some of the best. Usyk going doing some good body work in this round. Yes, he is, and good pivoting too. He pivots around with that left uppercut and comes with the right hook right down the middle. I love it. Capricorn is the star fighter's astrological sign. Well, of course, Jim. I mean, come on. If you're a Capricorn, <laughs> I mean, if we celebrate, I mean, you know, I, mean, I ain't gonna say too much, but Capricorns is what it is, you know. <laughs> Like the most philosophical sign on the planet. Famous philosophical Capricorn Roy Jones. You know, <laughs> doesn't get any better than that. And Usyk, a Capricorn in this fight, has knocked Imtuna down Four, for the second time. Five, so there's the second six, official knockdown, and the seven, and the score margin eight. is beginning okay. to widen here. Yeah, and that's more fatigue sure. than anything. I think well, Imtuna watch. went down because watch. Usyk surrounded him. He had him surrounded, and Imtuna said, let me get down here before oh, I have to punch. Good counter shot by Imtuna. Not a good shot, but he hasn't given up yet. No, he hasn't. One, two. Oh, good shot. Usyk oh, good lands shot. a big left over the top. Oh, good body shot by Imtuna. Now a real fight is breaking out, Jim. Imtuna has done his best fighting of the fight in the last 20 or 30 seconds. Oh, After yeah. going down for the second time, and there's the third knockdown. And now, Lumaret is going to stop the fight. Okay. That does it. So, Alexander Usyk has a TKO victory over Tabisu Imtuna. It's a very impressive performance by Usyk against a guy who wasn't cooperating, who stayed trying to win, who's not easy to hit, with a very awkward rhythm. Um, most fighters don't look that good against a guy like that. And Usyk shows sportsmanship, going over to check on Imchunu and help him up. And now Usyk plays to the crowd a little bit. Harold? Jim, you know, I've said this to referees on numerous times. When a guy gets knocked down, like like Imchunu got knocked down here the first time, and he gets up and he walks away, very often that means he don't want to fight no more. If you see a guy walk away like that, you know, turn his back away from the referee and walk away, he wants to quit. That's the time when Lumaret should have really thought about stopping it. Great point, Harold. Let's take another look. Yeah, here we see Usa coming in, jab, one, two, basically. Another one, two. Double jab, left hand, and he goes down. It really wasn't hit with a shot, just with fatigue. And I thought fatigue right there was doing it, so he came up with his last hurrah, got caught with that left hand right there, and that cut his eye, and then he went down. That put a bad gash over his right eye. At that time, it was all Alexander Usyk en route to the TKO. And let's go to ring announcer Joe Martinez for the official particulars on the technical knockout. Right here, boom, that was the left hand right there that did it. Joe Martinez. Ladies and gentlemen, the end comes to the official time. One minute, 53 seconds, round number nine. Referee Dr. Lou Moret puts a halt to the bout. Your winner by KO victory. He is still undefeated and still WBO Cruiserweight Champion of the World, Alexander Uzen. So let's take a look at